All right, hi, welcome to this webinar on the seven handling elements. I am One Mind Dogs instructor, Stephanie Williams, and today we will be talking about this topic that is at the core um, of our One Mind Dogs method. And it's all from the dog's perspective. So all about handling from their point of view and making sure that we are super clear and speaking their language. So we'll talk about the, the each of the handling elements, why they're important. We'll do a deep dive on each one. Um, and give you some suggestions that you can implement starting right away um, to, to begin to change your handling uh, to be clear for your dog. Here's a little summary of what we'll be covering today. First, we'll talk a bit about body language, which is the dog's natural language. They already understand it. You see it in action if you have more than one dog at home or if you have a simple hand signal for a sit or down, we're using body language. They also understand us that way and they think that we are body language creatures. So. You're, when you're smiling at your dog and praising them, they understand you um, just by reading your facial expressions, for example. So we'll get into that. Um, we'll talk about how the seven handling elements and how our method came to be, which is based on the story of Tekla. And if you're not familiar with uh, with Tekla, she was one of Yanita's dogs. So we'll you'll learn how this all came about. Um, we'll talk about each handling element and come back around to talking again about dog's perspective and how they can be our best teachers. Um, so let's go on to the next one which is body language. So we talked just a moment ago about this. This is the basis of our method that we understand that body language is the dog's natural language. And this is how they communicate with each other. It's how they understand us. So they think that we are body language creatures too. Um, and the seven handling elements are body language. So each one of those handling elements is a piece of body language that dogs have taught us um, helps them understand what we're doing on the agility course. Okay, so this method is for dogs by dogs. Um, they are our best teachers and have taught us that this is what this is how they read us and this is what works for them. So each element is body language and all seven elements come together to make our techniques. So each technique is comprised of the seven handling elements. You'll often often hear us say that um, it's important to make sure that each um, that all seven handling elements tell your dog the same thing, that they're all showing the same line. Um, so we will talk about that. And the more that you get to know each element and how it works, then the easier it is to learn the techniques that we have, because there's a lot in common um, from one technique to the next. Um, so our method originated from the story of Tekla, which was Yanita's dog uh, way back when, before um, when my dogs existed, where Yanita would run with Tekla and was super successful with her um, running agility until Tekla began to lose her hearing. And at the time, most of us ran agility in the same way where we kind of ran from obstacle to obstacle and would just kind of say uh, verbal obstacle names. Um, and we kind of got through the course that way. But when, once Tekla lost her hearing, that was no longer an option for Yanita. So she had to figure out another way of, go, of doing things. And so she didn't want to give up. And so she really tried to, to understand what's a new way that she could show her dog where to go on the course. And so she realized quickly that her dog understood her body language. So just by like simple behaviors like sits and downs or, or following her, she began to understand that that's how her dog was understanding her. And so through testing different things and trial and error with Tekla, she began to develop this way of doing agility um, based on body language. And so then from there, she tried the same, um, the same method with her dog Cosmo and turns out Cosmo would react the same way. And then we, then Yako got involved and we tried with his dogs and his dogs would react the same way and so on and so forth until at this point, around the world, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dogs have told us that this is how they understand um, the language of agility naturally. And so this is why our method works um, with any dog, um, because it's created by dogs and it is designed for dogs. So all dogs can understand it. And it's really cool to see in action when, for example, you just change one thing, like where your chest laser is pointing and your dog just like understands it um, just like that. So it's really, really neat. Um, so that's where, that is where our method came from. Um, and what we learned from Tekla was these seven handling elements. So this is the order of these handling elements in their significance to your dog. So movement being the first, then position, eyes, chest laser, legs, arms, and then finally voice. And I think most humans tend to see it the other way, where we tend to focus on voice and arms and maybe a little bit feet, and then we kind of forget a, a little bit about these other ones. And so um, the more that you can learn 
to speak, essentially speak fluent dog by remembering the order of these elements and their significance from your dog's point of view, the easier it is to tell them where to go on the course um, and then to be able to get ahead on the course earlier and have the dogs, have your dog understand what, what is the line that you want them to take. So not just what obstacle is it, but how should they take um, that particular obstacle. Okay, so these, these elements together, working together, give that information to your dog in a really clear way, okay? Um, so now we'll go on to the first handling element, which is movement. And movement is our strongest handling element. So it gives really strong information to the dog and they have a very natural reaction to it. And you can see it um, with your own dogs when you are, for example, just running around with them in the backyard, like they will easily chase you. And the faster you go, the faster they will go. Um, and if you slow down, so will they. Um, or even if we're just walking on leash together, like if we kind of walk in a brisk way, like they tend to kind of easily follow you. Or if you're um, calling them to come to you and you run backward and point your chest laser towards them, then they will come toward you. Um, so they just understand these things um, really naturally. So, so, so interesting. Um, and so we talked about how your motion influences them on the agility course the faster you go then the faster your dog will go and it will cause them to actually extend their stride as well so that's what we're seeing like um, sometimes what happens is that we see these wide turns because motion was telling one thing where some of the other handling elements were telling something else so you'll see an example of that in a moment but you can remember that the faster you're going the faster your dog is going to go and the further they will work from you as well whereas if you slow down a little bit so if you make a rhythm change or a deceleration um, slow down cue your dog will slow down too and they will collect their stride and this is how they can begin to understand that hey there's a turn coming for example um, so i will show you a video of that um, so that you can see exactly what what i mean all right so this is just a simple line of three jumps and here's mari showing her dog um, and you can see there that mari intended a turn but here she's running really hard at jump three just kind of going forward and running all the way up to the obstacle it tells her dog to like keep going forward because the strong motion in that direction is saying that whereas if you see there that on commitment to jump three she makes a rhythm change okay so a change in her motion right there now her dog is prepared to turn okay so it's not saying go to that jump like the dog knows that it's saying take that jump on a turn okay so we can tell our dogs a lot more information by remembering um, how these elements work together okay so your your the speed of your motion gives your dog a lot of info and i think a lot of us um have done this before where like where we know there's a turn coming but we're thinking of the obstacle as opposed to the actual turning and so we run all the way up to the jump and then the dog goes wide um so really be thinking about showing that slowing down cue when you need it changing your motion from extension to, from faster to slower to making that rhythm change will really help them prepare for that turn um, when you see them commit to the obstacle and we'll talk about commitment um, coming up um, also important to to know about motion that dogs will run a parallel line so when you're running um, they are also taking a parallel line to you okay so we'll see we saw an example of that just now with mari running her dog on that three jump line and here's another um, here's Mari again, just running, and her dog is taking a parallel line to her. Um, and this will lead us a little bit into position. Um, so I wanted to show this one first so that you can see that. And then we'll come back to it again, again in a moment because it shows actually a little bit more information. But remember that your dog runs a parallel line to you. Okay, so your, your motion is showing that um, as you move through the course. Next um next handling element is position and position is about your location in relationship to your dog your dog's line or the obstacle for example so with position um we often say that we are moving one step off the intended line that parallel line that i just showed you um and your position is going to tell your dog even more information than that um, which we'll get to in a moment but position also might be something for example like um are you positioned by the end of the bar for a backside send where your dog can see the wing um, for example, or are you behind the jump for a forced front cross? Those are examples of position. Um, so you'll see that as well as if, when you go and study our techniques, okay? Um, but position gives dogs really important information, um, which is what leading leg should you be on, okay? So this is the first thing that they're going to um, be taking from your position. And so I'm gonna go back to this one because this tells our dogs a lot. Dogs want to turn naturally towards us okay so if you are on your dog's right side then your dog wants to turn to the right if you're on your dog's left side then they want to turn to the left and as i'm watching these videos i always have to stop and think okay which 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 side is it so if you've taken guided courses with me you're like you're super used to that um and this is the dog's left okay yes i think so so here we're gonna see that because mari's on the dog's left 
that the dog is going to make a left turn and then we see it there okay so that this is the information that they're getting leading leg information because they can only turn in the direction of the lead leg they are on all right whereas if you make a side change the dog will make a lead leg change and then they can turn the other way so here we have a rear cross where Mari's going to make a side change now we just saw that lead leg change happen and now the dog is prepared to turn the other way there we go really interesting okay um so this is how they naturally understand us and so remember they can only turn in the lead leg to the lead leg that they are on okay so you can um be thinking that that's the first piece of information you're giving with position know your dog's working distance also so we, we talked about that parallel line um for the average dog it is about one meter or three feet away from you so your position will tell your dog um, in that sense like what line to take on the course so you can set that line if you know what is my dog's working distance now some dogs have a bigger working distance than that um, my, my youngest sheltie is really quite far um, from that whereas other dogs might be a little bit closer so get to know your individual dog because your per, your position then is the way that you will set that line by knowing okay my dog is you know one meter from me um is there working distance so if i'm here my dog will run here um so you'll see another example of that um here in this next video i'm going to show you okay which here we have we will have Yako just running this um, line going to the tunnel. Okay, so you can see the parallel line and the, um, the position there where we're showing that line going to the tunnel and the lead leg, leg change needed to go into the tunnel as well. Okay, so there's your, your parallel line and here now Yanita. So we need that the line going to this jump um, with the layer in between. And here if she, on the left side, if she takes the parallel line, then we easily get that jump. Whereas on this right side, you see if she tries to like kind of go around the jump, that it pulls the dog in. Okay, so they're always planning that parallel line. We'll take another look at one more, where this will, I think, really show you how your position tells your dog where to go. Okay, so here, front cross and position one step and one small step off the intended line here gives us easily a the line to this, this correct jump. Whereas you'll see now um, on this next one, if Thule is just a little bit out of position, you'll see what line that sets because they want to come to the plane of the handler. And so here, because she's just a little bit far out of position, it sets a completely different line. Okay, so position gives a, a lot of really important information um, to your dog there. So know your dog's working distance and that will really help you set that intended line. Okay, let's keep going. And next one is eyes, which eyes are connection. It is as simple as knowing that your dog will come to the side that you're looking at. Um, and then it's also about seeing commitment. So how do you recognize when your dog is, has told you that, yes, I am going to take that obstacle and, and that's seeing that they are looking at it. That takes some practice. I personally am always practicing that, um, that connection and being able to see commitment and how much connection does my dog need at a particular instance. Um, but you can remember that your dog will come to the side that you are looking at. Um, lack of connection often leads to refusals and off courses. So many times when dogs pass obstacles, maybe our position is out like we saw with Tulia in that previous example I just showed you, but also it's sometimes because we dropped connection, which you, you will see um, in the video I'm gonna show you in a moment. But remember that when you are looking at your dog, your dog can then focus on the task of going to the obstacles. And when we drop that connection, the dog will first try to come get it back. And so they will look at you. And only one member of the team can be looking at obstacles and it is not the handler, um, it's the dog. So. If you're looking at them, they can do their job of looking for the obstacle. Okay, so we'll grab a couple of videos now. The first one I'm gonna show you is just the dog's natural reaction to connection. Okay, so they easily come to the side you're looking to. And even with young puppies, we see this, that you know, if we do this little fun game where like you, you have someone hold your dog or you leave them in a stay and then you release them, and if you just make these side changes, they're going to still come to the side that you are looking to. Okay, so really just their natural reaction to that. And even if you're trying to use your arm to commit them to an obstacle, still you can see that the connection is more important there, that they're going to come to the side that you are looking to. Okay, so really, really important to remember that. And here, because Yanis is not looking at her dog, her dog just goes to what is um, next on the line after the landing of that jump, where now if we have connection, now the dog comes to the correct spot. Okay, so really, really important. Um, and now we'll see another example 
which I think happens to a lot of us, where we just happen to check where am I going on the course, and then the dog drops the commitment to the obstacle. Okay, and this is from our International Training Week series, which is you'll see Yako or Yanita or Tulia giving like seminars to their students are really, really fun and interesting to watch. And there you can see it that the handler has dropped connection because she's checking where is this obstacle. And that caption there where like she says that she assumed that her dog was going and that happens to us. Um, so connection is something that like is always important to practice. And there you can see that when the handler is looking at the dog, the dog easily stays committed to the obstacle. Okay, right there. And just with that side profile connection, that that's enough to support the commitment to that obstacle. So the dog will take it and the handler is still able to keep track of where she's going and show the next line. Okay, so something to always be um, checking that do I have connection there um, when you are practicing your handling with your dogs. Um, all right, let's keep going. Chess laser is the next one. And chess laser is that imaginary laser pointer that is extending from the center of your chest and pointing to about five feet in front of you. And if you're in the US and you have five foot bars like, like we do um, at my training center, then you can just take that uh, jump bar and just kind of put it in the middle of your chest and like kind of see where actually is your chest laser pointing um, because dogs will go where your chest laser points to, which is really, really interesting um, to me that even if we're doing handling from a distance, they're still going to go to where your chest laser points. And we can see that here in this lateral push video that where Mari's chest laser points is where her dog goes to. All right, so we'll take another look at that here. So here you can see it, that that chest laser is pointing at the takeoff to the jump and that is supporting for the dog to go there and helping the dog commit. And then Mari can then finish the handling um, by front crossing, even at this distance. Okay, so really, really interesting and, and super important um, that they will go to where your chest laser is pointing. We will take a look at another one and this one too, I think happens to a lot of us when we need these pull throughs, um, these, these threadle type lines. And we here too, really important to remember, if you point your chest laser at your dog, then they're going to come toward you. And many times we forget to do that and we point the chest laser um, to the wrong line, which you'll see here. And then the dog's reaction to that is to go to that spot. Okay, rather than to pull through, even if the arm is lifted and we're like trying to cue with the arm, um, this is what happens. So there if we remember and remember to check like is your chest laser pointing where you really want your dog to go is that really where you want your dog going then that will help you a lot when you are um planning your handling on the course and chest laser also will help to to cue slowdowns and tight turns so if your chest laser is pointing forward for example and you're running forward then just like we saw in the first example i showed you with mari running that straight line with her dog then the dog will plan to go forward whereas if you point your chest laser towards the takeoff point um then you're going to give slowdown cues and that will also help your dog prepare for a turn. OK, so it gives lots of really important information to the dog um, just by thinking about where is my chest laser pointing. Feet are the next one and feet are all about your the direction your toes are pointing. So whether you're running forward or you're making a step to the takeoff point, um, your dog is noticing feet before they are um, noticing arms. I teach a, a class with a really small dog, um, like a little Maltese mix. And one of the students commented the other night that, hey, she must see your feet like before she sees anything else. And I'm like, yeah, probably, because that's what's on her eye level. Whereas like hands are for her way up. Um, she'd have to look up really far to see that. So for most dogs, for pretty much, unless you're running a quite tall dog, they're seeing your feet before they are seeing your hands. Um, so bear that in mind as you plan your handling through the course. Um, they are more important from the dog's point of view than arms in almost all cases. Now there's some techniques where we do have to commit our dog to our hands, which we'll talk about, but um, feet are super important. So they'll give direction of motion, feet will help the dog to commit to an obstacle, you can, feet will help to cue um, collection as opposed to extension based on the direction your toes are pointing. Uh, we make a step to commit in many instances um, we can also use feet to shape a line, like in a V-set, for example. So lots of information that we can give. And I'm going to show you an example um, where you can see how feet will not only commit the dog to the obstacle. Oh, wait, that's not the one. Um, but also... You can edit that one out. That is the wrong one. There it is. Um, here's an example where you can see that feet will not only commit the dog to the obstacle, but also tell what type of turn to make, what type of line. So on the left side there, you can see that the handler was pointing her feet towards the landing spot. 
Whereas on the right side, you can see that the handler is pointing her feet towards the takeoff and chest laser as well. So the, those two things are going together there where you can see the difference in the turning that it makes where um, when the toes and chest laser are pointed towards the landing spot, and we'll watch that one again um, because it goes quite fast, then you can see that you the dog gets a wide turn. Whereas when toes and chest laser are pointed at the takeoff spot, then the dog turns tightly. So let's watch it again. All right, so on the left, toes and chest laser towards the landing, wide turn. Whereas on the right, toes and chest laser towards the takeoff, tight turn. All right, and there we have it. All right, so there you can see with toes and chest laser pointed towards the landing, pointed forward, that look at where the dog is taking off from. So quite a bit in extension, whereas when you point your toes and your chest laser at the takeoff point, now we have a collected turn. So really important information for the dog. That's all natural for them to understand. Okay, so really, really important and really interesting to me. Um, all right, good. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, which now we can talk about arms, which more often arms are supporting what the other handling elements are already doing. So for example, um, if you're making a step to commit, your dog side arm is going to parallel that leg in most cases, where um, I find a lot of times when I'm working with live students in class and we say make a step to commit, then they lift the arm and not, uh, not actually step with the leg. And then we kind of joke and we're like, oh, you stepped with your arm and not your leg. Um, so remember um, when you're making that stepping that it's the leg and the arm can just kind of move in like almost like a little parallel with it. Um, like you see Yanita's arms are parallel here with her leg in this um, in this photo here, because um, they are less significant from the dog's point of view. And in most cases, um, your arm is supporting, like we said, like the other handling elements or, or causing the other handling element to do its job. So for example, when we say lift an opposite arm, we're saying that not because the arm is so important, but because the arm turns the chest laser. So in um, techniques such as German turn or running on the dog's line, where we need to point our chest laser towards the landing spot, um, if you lift your opposite arm, it will turn your chest. It's just easier to say lift your opposite arm. Um, but more important to the dog is that the chest laser is turning to, to help bring the dog um, on the correct line over the jump there. Um, so that's that's often how arms are working, okay? But we can look and see that even when you're handling from a distance, if we go back to this um, example that I gave with a chest laser, with this lateral push, that even at this distance, Mari's arm is just going to go parallel to where what her leg is doing. So it's still not going that high. Okay, so just kind of a parallel to the leg just to support. And that's that's with distance handling. So when we're handling just at our dog's natural working distance, we don't necessarily even have to lift our, um, our arm that high. Um, but arms also have other functions. Um, so for example, if you're using, if you're handling a lap turn and you need to get your dog's attention to the hand, there, there, then your hand will be important. Or a force front cross, for example, where you're behind the wing and committing your dog to come to that, that side of the wing, then yes, your hand is gonna be really important. But for the most part, it's playing a supporting role to the other five handling elements. And now we have voice, which also I think plays a supporting role to the other um, handling elements, okay? so least significant from the dog's point of view, but it still is the seventh handling element. So it's, it's okay to have verbals. It's just that they're not, um, they're not the most important thing to the dog. Um, so if you're running toward a tunnel and you're um, saying jump, they're still going to take the tunnel if that's what your handling elements are saying. Okay. But I think in most cases, verbals are really handy to kind of confirm for the dog that yes, they have read your handling elements correctly. So um, for example, if we watch handlers who are using left and right turn verbals, when you watch carefully, I think you see that the dog already knows which which way to turn because they read that um, early on from the other um, six handling elements. And so there the handler is just confirming for the dog that yes, indeed it is a left turn, but the dog already knows it. Um, so I think verbals really function that way. And so for most of us, um, we are using like most commonly these these verbal cues. So backs a backside send verbal, um, a collection cue, obstacle names are really useful, ex especially in the um, uh, in the case of discriminations where you have a like a contact and a tunnel next to each other. Um, the obstacle name can really really help there. Um, a go forward cue where the dog has to pass you and drive on to obstacles that are ahead of them. Where still, if you're running straight. Um, with strong motion and your toes and chest laser are pointed forward and you're looking at your dog, then they already know go forward. But there that verbal cue is telling, can confirm for them that yes, drive forward to that next obstacle. Um, release word, 
that we need to um, tell our dog when to exit a stay or leave a contact obstacle, um, a name call so that they look at you. Uh, maybe you have a come close to you verbal. So um, they do have their job. It's just that they're not um, they are not the most important thing from the dog's point of view. And that's always the thing to, to remember. Um, so if you check out our distance handling course um, on the website, then you'll see Yanita will tell you what verbals she uses with her dogs, um, but still they're playing that supporting role. Okay, so um, you can kind of consider which ones will be most helpful for you. I think the, the one time that I'm really trusting um, a verbal cue is when I have a, a running dog walk and going to a backside send where I'm, I'm saying that verbal cue and, and my dog is running that dog walk. And then um, I still think though that my position and, and motion are telling her in connection just as much. Um, but that might be the one time that I'm like hoping that I'm using that verbal to give as early information as possible while she's in the midst of running her dog walk. But that, that's really it. Um, many times I run the course without saying anything to the dogs, you know, except like the good girl, <laughs> for example. Okay, uh, so those are your verbal cues. Um, and finally, always remember, focus on your dog first. So if there's something on the course that happens that was unexpected, most of the time um, it's because your dog is telling you that, hey, this is how I understood it. So check the handling elements, make sure that they are all telling the same thing. Um, and that's the final tip that I'm going to leave you with is that if you always check and go and, and then ask yourself, are all, all seven handling elements um, supporting the same line? then your dog will read them and will go on the line that you're that you are intending to tell them and, and if one is a little bit out so like if one handling element is kind of off message which um we have a, a wonderful community member um by the name of ann ann thomas who gave me that little line and i love it so much um where she said oh i didn't realize that my my chest laser was off message and i was like that's great that's exactly what can happen that one handling element is telling something different than the others are then sometimes that's why we see unexpected things happen on the course so just ask yourself are all my handling elements saying the same thing and it's really great to video your training that you can then go back and check and look and see were they really um because many times it's that one little handling element that's saying something else um so the more that you get um become consistent with that then the easier it is to tell your your partner where to go on the course and the the run the clean runs start to happen more and more your dog gains confidence runs faster and you can get ahead on the course more easily too okay um so hopefully you enjoyed this webinar and um we will be looking forward to seeing you on the website